So maybe you just bought a dirt bike or you're looking to buy one and it doesn't run. Well, in today's video, I'm going to take you through some steps and show you how you can get it started up. So let's do it. So there's going to be a couple basic things we're just going to run over really quickly and make sure that they are all in the correct position so we can get this bike started up and make sure that we're in good running order. So one of the very first things you're going to want to check is to make sure that your kill switch is in the run position. That's a very simple mistake. Second thing is making sure that your key is turned on. You're going to want to make sure that the bike is in neutral. So go ahead and shift the lever down into neutral. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure that your fuel is turned on. So we'll go ahead and turn our fuel on. On here and you want to make sure that when you, once you've turned the fuel on that there is no fuel running out of the bowl overflow so here is your carb bowl and here's the overflow line so you want to make sure no fuel is running out now the reason that the carb bowl overflow would be flowing out if it was uh, is because your float is stuck so when as the fuel rises it's supposed to hit a certain spot and the float shuts off and goes okay that's as much fuel as we need we don't need to get send anymore and what's happening is your float staying stuck so it's just saying hey send more fuel send more fuel send more fuel and that's why it'd be overflowing and coming out your overflow line so if that's the case you need to go ahead and take your carb apart which i have a video up here shows you how to do that so if you guys have checked over those five things and your bike still isn't starting up obviously we got a bigger issue so let's dive right into that and diagnose what it could be so when we go to talk about what does a bike need to actually run we're going to need four things we're going to need compression we're going to need fuel we're going to need spark and we're going to need air so let's go over and check if we have those four things on our bike because if you don't have one of those your bike will not run so for ease of showing you guys I got my XR100 here and we're gonna go ahead and check if we have spark so to check if we have spark it's really simple all we're gonna do is grab our boot here and we're gonna pull this off we're gonna go ahead and take our socket here and we're gonna pop the spark plug out a bonus tip while we're in here is you want to take a look at the end of this spark plug and what we're looking at is the color of the spark plug now you'll see this one's kind of like a brownish color if this was white that would indicate that you're running it too lean and that you don't have enough fuel in the mixture uh, now if this was black or covered and it was wet that you would have that indicates that you have just way too much fuel So you'd want to pull some fuel out Then I check for spark All we're gonna to want to do is take the spark plug stick it in the boot how it always go stick the spark plug up against the head The cylinder head and we're gonna go ahead and take the kickstarter and we're gonna kick it over So as I kick it over you guys should be able to see that in between the electrode and the little prong There should be a little bit of electricity So as you guys could see when I was kicking over the bike, it had that little bit of blue electrode uh, that was going between the spark plug. So in that case, we know that we have spark. Now in the event of you not having spark, if you were doing that and you're not seeing any spark happen in between that spark plug, uh, the first thing you can replace is gonna be replacing your spark plug. Uh, the second thing is replacing the actual boot. So this yellow guy here, would be the boot. Now if you want to try fixing this for free, what you can do is go ahead and clean out the inside of that boot. So the yellow piece that I showed you guys, go ahead and clean the inside of that out for any corrosion. Usually all, what it means when you have no spark is that somewhere it's grounding out because all that the coil wire is, that yellow boot wire that goes with the spark plug, it's just a hot wire. So it's just a wire that has current going through with it. So if it touches something and is grounding out on some sort of metal somewhere, you could have potential loss of spark or if there's corrosion from moisture getting in there for when you wash your bike and you're not putting the boot off and drying the spark plug uh, it can cause corrosion which can cause a loss of spark as well now when we're looking at your spark plug it might look clean uh, but the connections could be faulty and corroded or dirty dirtied up uh, it also could be the stator the coil pack uh, or problems with the kill switch the stator acts much like a generator um, or an alternator and works with the coil pack to ignite the spark plug So if your coil packs done, well, you're not gonna get any spark and if the stator is done Then you're definitely not gonna get any spark So now that we know we have spark the next thing we're gonna go over and check is our fuel and see if our fuel lines are messed up Or if we have any sort of fuel clog issues because if you're not getting fuel delivery to the engine the bikes never gonna run So the first thing I would do is go ahead take your gas cap off and once it's off I just go ahead and smell inside the gas tank and if it smells really rotten and not like fuel uh, That's usually the varnish that's happened when fuel sits all the fuel evaporates out of it and that you're left with uh, like a hard debris and when that stuff gets into your fuel tank goes down into your carb goes down in your engine and it's just gonna clog up the entire fuel system so I have two different examples of what your air filter might look like here's one that's an open style on my Apollo uh, RFZ this is a 150 swap but there's my filter there this one's an open style whereas if we come over to my Honda XR this one has the air filter that sits in behind this door here so you actually take this rubber cap, cap off and the air filter is completely enclosed in behind a casing which this is a much better style as you don't get nearly as much debris in there but you're gonna want to go ahead pop this cover off take your filter out inspect your filter make sure that guy looks nice and clean so now we know that we have spark we know that we have a clean air filter and that there's no clogs or any 
debris or any water that's gone in there. If there's any debris that's been inside there, you're gonna wanna go ahead and pull all that out and clean the whole intake out really well. And something you really wanna watch out for is that if this is an older bike and it's been sitting around, or even if it hasn't been sitting around, but if it's an older bike and it has one of these enclosed styles, like the XR does, this intake boot here. You want to be cautious of these intake boots. Uh, as they get old, this rubber becomes stiff and hard. It should be nice and pliable just like this. That's how the rubber is meant to be, as soft and squishy. If it's hard as rock, uh, it's gonna be really brittle and susceptible to cracking and breaking when you're out on the trail. And then you're gonna be sucking in all sorts of dirt and debris into your carburetor. So checking that this boot is in a well good condition is super important because that's where your air is coming through and you need a controlled amount of air to have it mixed properly with the amount of fuel to run correctly. When we're talking about air filters, make sure your air filter isn't too dirty. Make sure you avoid this cone style filter and then you get a genuine like UNI style, style filter. Links in the description if you're looking for one but those cone style filters are junk. So now that we know we have good airflow, our boot isn't torn, our filter is nice and clean, we got spark. Uh, the next thing we're gonna go over and check is that we have compression, because if there's no compression, it doesn't matter how much fuel or anything we throw at it because the bike won't start. So a really easy way to check to just see if the bike has compression is to put your foot on the Kickstarter and just see if it has any sort of um, pressure against your foot. If it wants to just go to the floor and like fall through easily, there's probably not any compression with the bike, which means that the engine is pretty well toast. Whenever you're buying a used dirt bike, I super strongly advise that you do try and get it started before you buy it, because if it doesn't start and you haven't ever heard it start, you won't know if it's gonna start, and it's really hard to tell if the bike's gonna be worth it or not. So this is why when I go and look at these used dirt bikes, uh, I usually wanna go over and check out these couple of things on them. So like I said, to feel compression, all you're gonna wanna do is put your foot on the Kickstarter and just feel that there's like some sort of force to it when you're trying to kick it over and that it doesn't just want to fall to the ground. So you can see like the whole bike is wanting to shake from me kicking it over, which is a good sign that it has compression. So if we know we have compression, we got spark, we got a good clean air filter, the last thing we need to do is check that our fuel is good. So the only real way here to clean out the fuel system is by taking off your carburetor here and the fuel tank. Uh, so it's quite a simple thing, but it's something you're gonna have to do if you want to check and clean that out If you guys would like to see a video of pulling a carburetor and going over the whole thing and tuning a carburetor and just learning about Carburetors, I'll go ahead and link a video up in the top corner and you guys can check that out And uh, yeah, I'll go over it fully in depth on how to clean and fix up your carburetor Get tuned in so you can have your bike running as, as best as it can now in the meantime though, when you're at the, at the place looking at your bike to buy or the, even if you've got it And you just want to see if the bike will fire up. There's a little bit of a trick hacks thing that you can do that we can go ahead and get your bike started up quickly to see if it does run. So my tip for you guys on getting your bike started if the fuel you think the fuel is the culprit of why it's not starting is you're going to want to go ahead and get a small bottle, poke a hole in the top, fill the bottle with some fuel, spray that fuel into the air filter itself and that when you go to kick it over it'll suck the air with that fuel mixture through the air filter and hopefully start your bike up. So there's a great tip on how to get your bike started. When I was buying my XR100 here that is the exact little trick that I used to get this bike started up because I bought this as a non running bike uh, for way cheaper than they normally go for and uh, all it was is a dirty fuel system and now this thing runs like a champ and starts first kick every time. All right, and then I got one more extra bonus tip for you guys. If you guys have one of these Apollo pit bikes or any sort of the Chinese pit bikes, uh, some of them do have a clutch neutral safety on them. Uh, so if you if it thinks that the clutch is engaged or been pulled at all, so if you have your clutch engagement set wrong, the kickstarter won't actually engage with the engine. Uh, so you're gonna go ahead and need to do a clutch adjustment, which if you guys wanna learn how to do that, I also have a video on that. So that'll be linked up in the top corner. You guys can click that and watch how to do your clutch adjustment. Uh, but that'll be another reason that your bike isn't starting is if you have that proper improperly set and the clutch safety is being engaged uh, so it thinks that you're pulling the clutch cable so then it won't start the bike because it won't engage the Kickstarter which is a lot of issue that I know a lot of people have because I have you guys DMing me all the time saying hey my Kickstarter is kicking over and there's like no force and there's no compression and it's not making any noise this is what you need to do is go ahead and adjust your clutch and get that properly set so once again that video is up in the top corner uh, and it's always down in the description as well now a couple other common issues is once you have got your bike started that maybe it's revving to the moon like as soon as you start the bike it just rpm climbs right to the moon and it's just screaming wide open throttle uh, so you're going to want to go ahead and check 
that your throttle cable isn't stuck so sometimes when you take the carb out uh, the slide that goes into the top of the carb which once again if you guys want to check out so you know what I'm talking about the videos up in the top left corner about talking about all about carbs uh, but there's a slide that goes into the top of the carb and uh, it can go in two different ways but there's really only one correct way for it to slide down uh, so you guys will have to kind of dial that in and you'll see that if you put it in the wrong way the throttle will be kind of already like a quarter turned uh, so that that can cause your throttle to obviously be increased because the throttle cable is being under tension when you put it in the incorrect way uh, and another thing is that if you have just taken the carb uh, slide out with the throttle and you've routed it differently through your handlebars when you're turning the handlebars it can be pulling on the throttle cable itself which is actually pulling on the throttle that's inside the carb so it's actually revving it up because the throttle cable is being pulled on when you turn so that is another issue that I have had uh, when you put the carb back together for your first time that you can run the throttle cable incorrectly and that can cause your bike not to run or make your bike just scream to the moon when you try and just start it up and it revs extremely high uh, and then another issue can be that you have popping or bogging on acceleration so when you get on the throttle the bike kind of stutters and doesn't really want to ride uh, I got a video covering that topic so that'll be right here if you guys want to click that and I'll show you guys how you can fix your dirt bike and get the most amount of power out of it uh, and actually make the thing run correctly and not bog or pop on acceleration so bogging is too much fuel and if it's popping it's running lean and there's not enough fuel and once again uh, you can check that all out by checking your spark plug and looking at the end of that to see if it's white or if it's black that can also indicate whether you're lean or rich but a good indication is bogging is too much fuel popping is not enough fuel now if you guys want to see how to make your bike as fast as possible and uh, actually make it quicker in all aspects I got a video covering that right here if you guys have enjoyed this video hopefully your bike is now running and if it isn't go ahead leave a comment down below ask me any questions about how to get your dirt bike running and we can go ahead and cover that and I will help you out so make sure you guys click that subscribe button click the like button leave any comments down below with any questions I will see you guys in the next one make sure you guys check this video out so you guys can see how to make your dirt bike faster Peace out.